So a day after my first chemo, I'm happy to say yesterday was a little rough. Today I'm feeling much better. They often say that the side effects really kick in about three, four days after. Right now I'm feeling pretty good overall. You might notice I have a little pouch on me here. It's actually hooked up to this IV. And this is actually a pump that's actually pumping the last chemo treatment in over 46 hours. So I have to wear this for 46 hours. So tomorrow I go back and they unplug it and then I'm done with my first treatment. And then we'll see what happens over the next, you know, three, four or five days. Hopefully I'll be able to be here as much as I possibly can. Like I mentioned before, if I'm not here, Please show support to the channel. The crew's gonna do an amazing job without me. But I can assure you, I'm gonna try to be here as much as humanly possible because I love it here. And I'm excited today because my friend Greg Woodstock from The Pond Guy, as well as Ed the Pond Professor are in town and they're coming over and we're gonna go across the street and talk about the ponds that they're gonna do for us. I'm excited about that. They should be here any minute. And I couldn't be more excited to hear that the crew actually fed Juliet a big meal. You can see a lump in her right there. That was her first meal since she's been here. And you guys know you always want that first meal to go in because then you know like, all right, they're starting to settle in and starting to feel comfortable. Lucy's still off of food, which happens this time every single year, but Juliet ate her first meal. That is absolutely amazing. Take a look at this, guys. I'm excited too. Jessica actually did the Euromastics here, our Nate Euromastics. Of course, we have a couple other Euromastics here. We have the Egyptian that will eventually go across the street as well. But these guys look so cute. I love the way she did this whole thing. 120 degrees on top of this little volcanic rock right here, which is perfect. They look great. I think they're going to do really well here. And they're really good to handle too. Once you get them out, they're really cool. Great. So, addition to the Reptarian. Formula on YouTube. So let's go. Oh no! This... 27 away. We're 26 away from 4 million on YouTube. I mean, how crazy is that? 25 away from 4 million on YouTube. That's this is like, awesome. That happened it's so cool. fast. I know we were like 27 thousand away. <laughs> just, uh, that's how it now. So now it's just getting there. What? A few days gave 50 thousand. Wow. We're about to hit 4 mil. Less than 20 subscribers left. subscribers. You're not subscribed. <laughs> Seven, six, five, four, three, away. two. Oh, it's gonna stop. Oh no! One, <laughs> four, four million. <laughs> awesome. Almost at five mil. Thank you right. so much. I mean, this is such an amazing thing. I cannot believe we hit four million. It's been, I mean, could you imagine when we started this channel? We have four million plus subscribers. You guys are absolutely amazing. That's Good. awesome. Good job, guys. <laughs> this is awesome. Thank you, guys. We just hit four mil on YouTube. We have four mil? Yeah. Nice. Heck. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Finally back. So obviously Greg and Ed are here, the pond guy and the pond professor. I'll put a link in the descriptions. These guys are so great to me. They always help me out with so much stuff. And today we're going to be talking about ponds over at the aquarium. If you guys say we head over and check it out. <laughs> Super it. excited. Let's go. This will be an actual like dark room with uh, three foot cylinder tanks below the ceiling. Yeah. that have just glowfish. You walk through here, you come through here obviously. And this will be a filtration room for this. Okay. We're going to have a window so you can see into it. Oh, neat. So yeah. Yeah, see if you can see behind the scenes. Yeah. That yeah. so, right? Are you still gonna do a swim with thing? You said you got touch tank. Yep, yep. The thought was have a big tall waterfall on one side, six foot or so at least. So it's kind of above people's eye, you know, sight line, coming down into like a plunge pool area, maybe another smaller waterfall coming down and then going underneath a bridge. So then there's a slab of something, wooden bridge, I don't even know yet, but a bridge going across and then kind of a stream-like type of a pond to have lots of flow, could have nice uh, vertical walls in it, koi fish, anything that could actually handle the winters and everything out here. Something that could stay out here 365 and, days And weren't we also talking about some fountainscapes? Like a stack slate. We could. What I would like is yeah, that we, we have totally a big could. waterfall because it's it's a huge. We want it, we want to grab a street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what would be cool is if they have a waterfall on one side. I love the bridge because everybody would just interact. You know, yeah. it would draw people in. You know, yeah. walk over a bridge to get yeah. to the aquarium, but then to balance it off on the other side, maybe you know three stack slate urns, and then of course everything lit up at night with color changing lights. <laughs> Guys, we hit 4 million subscribers on YouTube. The Reptarium and Brian did, but we're, of course we're part of that. We love you guys so much for it. I steal the show. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we can't thank you guys enough for watching. We're so grateful to be a part of it, especially the day after Brian Deuce does chemo. How great is that? And I just wanted to say thank you for being a subscriber. I'm not saying. There we go. Isn't that the cutest thing? We 
saw the video of Brian going to the Columbus Zoo and they actually had their armadillo perfectly trained where she would perch up on a little wooden device. Obviously we have some work to do, but I think this will be really cute here in no time. There it goes. And that's kind of what we're aiming for. <laughs> Good job. Is your vision to have the waterfall here or here? Which, which I was thinking waterfall on the right side just because you have all of the glass and everything here. So it's almost like you have the high and then it, everything kind of flows and kind of opens up. Gotcha. Um, and there's also kind of an end over here. So it's like it would be an easy way to do that. Um, but we'd also have to see, I don't know if you have a layout of the of the actual windows so we could actually see you. what that's going to look like. That, yeah. We don't want to disrupt any of that. We want to so start over here and then go show me where we would end at with the with the fountainscape the pond would probably start right here so this would be main waterfall secondary waterfall but we want to make sure that the fish could go back and forth underneath everything so we're coming all the way to the one side bridge going out a bridge going in yeah yeah Oh, two bridges? Yeah, because you're going to have an entry and, a, and an exit. Entry and exit. So maybe the other bridge so, goes across the wetland, yeah. and then we put the fountainscapes on uh, top of the wetland. Uh, on the back side of that. Oh, so I then we push it a little bit, another 10 feet that way or something and like that. How far out do you think you'd have to come? I would try to like to keep it somewhat tight. And then what we would do is we would just give Noah a sledgehammer and let him take all this asphalt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you think, Bert? <laughs> can you picture it? I, I can as you're okay. saying it. So we could talk maybe to Bernie about getting bridges if oh, we yeah. want to have a bridge That's made from him. I mean, that just gives me chills even thinking about it. I mean, it's just, I mean, I just think again with the windows and the waterfall and the bridge. I mean, what an inviting place, right? Yes, you know? and everybody would see it. And then because of the way the lighting would be with the waterfalls, it would shimmer off the building. So the, the building itself would get different colored lighting with the rippling of the water. It's almost crazy to think that, that you know, what it's going to look like, you know. I mean, I know you guys are so great at what you do. Your vision is so much greater than mine, but I know it's going to be absolutely oh, spectacular. And curb appeal, it's all about, like, when someone drives by, they go, holy cow, what is that place? I've got to go and check that place out, you know. And, and I can't think of a better entrance than that. I mean, that's just absolutely insane. We gotta feed Tyson. I don't know where he's at. He's getting bigger. Oh, here he is. Is he almost kind of went into like a hibernation state or a, a brumation state? So like he's still active. He still eats a little bit, but like it wasn't the old Tyson that you guys all know and love. Look at him now. Look, he's already like food. Oh, okay. And currently, he's not gonna go. And then we're gonna go. <laughs> he's so funny. I'm so happy that he's eating because obviously an eastern box turtle, so they are theoretically native to Michigan, so they do go into brumation, hibernation, whatever you want to call it, and it's a little scary, especially when you take care of him and he's still so small. The amazing thing is he has, oh, you spit it out. Relax, buddy. Here, here. Nope, you got to come back this way. And oh, now don't spit it out. So believe it or not, guys, he has like tripled in size since we got him. Right now he's about 25-ish. 25-ish gram, something like that. So he is getting big. He's just now starting to develop his flap. So when we're done feeding, I might show that, but he'll go out and just like that. But when they get mad, basically called box turtle, they pull their feet in, they pull their head in, and then their little flap goes boop, and it shuts. Super cool. I love this little guy. He's going straight for the cuticle. That's not fair. No, we're out of blood worms. Dude, I'm literally right here. We're out of blood worms. Okay, I'll go get them. They got like the packages of the algae wafers. You want to grab one or two? Yeah, with the pleco on the front? Yeah. Okay. Mike is so loud sometimes. He could have just asked. Blood worms? The out of shrimp. Marine cuisine. Clownfish. Got it. Agudurkadurbo wafers. All right, hold on one second. Oh, oh, hold it right over at this part right oh, oh. That should do it. It worked. Yeah, there we go. How's the boss? We're, you know. We just started this right. and stuff, but, okay. but we're keeping them happy and healthy as much as we can. God bless them. Thanks, we yeah, appreciate we're you. We're praying for them, all right? Well, we appreciate you, you so much. such a good guy. I owe you. Hello, Rocky. <laughs> Matilda, hey, girl. The outcast kids in high school will, like, have to eat in the bath. That's kind of how I feel right now. Like, I have to eat in the tortoise pen by myself. <laughs> well, Mike and everybody else eats in the lunchroom. <laughs> <laughs> you know how that is? Like that's, yeah, that's what's happening right now. You hungry, girl? 
I can share. I have a salami sandwich too. There's no dressing on the salad. Leafy greens. Ow, don't step on Ow, she's gonna step on me. You gotta Matilda. give her some food. <laughs> Matilda, wait your turn. Lettuce? Mike, can you explain to the fans why I have to eat lunch alone in the tortoise pen? Am I bullied here? I think, I think they know. <laughs> nom nom nom. This is the best lunch time ever. Boop. Bop. Administrative. Julia came out. She might get behind the thing. As much as I love you, girly, you are way too big for me to be doing by myself. So I'm just gonna point your head. Wanna go that way? Go that way. Thanks so much. Nah! Did you get the blood worms? No, huh? What? Trying to stop. Does it? <laughs> what? Did you get the blood one? Yeah! Oh, and you got in our wafers. Thanks. I love you. Oh, let me get lights on. Yeah, that I don't know. I don't know what angle lights are. <laughs> 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 ah, God. This is where I said, I don't know if you guys can help. If you guys can't help, maybe you can turn me out to someone that can't help because I know you've got a lot of jobs and mm -hmm. you're doing a lot here and I know you only have so many days in your year that you can travel. But basically, when we come around here, you know, essentially, there'll be a corner here, right? And I just want the thing to go like around the corner, like almost like a C, crescent exactly, that, that is like big enough to be cool, but it doesn't have to be really that big because, you know, it's just a biofall. Is that on the drawing? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah it's on there. Yeah. That little mm, on here. Yeah. What's the dimensions? So maybe maybe right. 10 foot. Kind of a seat ledge or something on top of it, wide enough so the turtles obviously can't climb out. So just a little bit of a lip, and then on the inside could be all natural boulders, vegetation, yeah. and plain I mean, rock. My initial so basically, was, like what we have at the office. Where you, you walk in here, and it's just completely dark, and there'd just be three cylinders, four ceiling, that'd be glowfish. Now everything from here on out is salt water. It's, 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 it's marine. Just a little health update again this is day two after chemo yesterday you guys saw that i had a little bit of a rough time it was definitely a lot harder than i expected when i had that reaction thankfully after a couple hours i started to feel a little bit better you know the rest of the night was a little bit rough but i got some sleep obviously felt a lot better this morning enough to come to work which was great to get a chance to meet ed and greg here and talk about the project it was really just amazing to me and you know even though we're kind of a little bit on a pause trying to raise the money to finish this it's still things are moving along right we're still trying to prep as much as we can this bill for the pond is going to be July 9th so we have to get a lot done by July 9th so here pretty soon we're gonna to have to push that foot on the pedal and start getting things built so they're ready for the pond belt again that October date is slipping away a little bit because we've had to push back a little bit but we're definitely still looking sometime in 2023 and hopefully in the next say two three weeks tops we'll be able to push the green button again and get this project back on track but me with those guys was so exciting I'm hanging in there guys is it easy no but I'm trying to and every day I feel good I'm gonna come here and try to inspire you guys to show you that how much I love not only the animals and the things that I do but also the passion I have for this coming project.